So a lot of times in school, I get called a nerd. And I got tired of hearing it. I wanted to see if I fit the label. So I looked the definition up. According to Merriam-Webster's, a nerd is an unstylish, unattractive, or socially inept person, especially one slavishly devoted to academic desires. When kids first started calling me a nerd, back in maybe fifth or sixth grade, I tried to fight it. I tried to stop them calling me a nerd. Eventually, I caved into the reality that it wouldn't stop, and I tried to make my contribution to the world being redefining nerd. But those kids who were calling me a nerd back in fifth and sixth grade, they weren't totally off base. I'm often doing stuff outside of school, like writing short stories that other kids wouldn't dream of. And I had little to no tact back then. And so if you look at those two things, that kind of fits the definition of nerd. But besides that, how am I really different from the average teenage boy? I play video games on my PlayStation. Like Ben said in the intro, I collect sports cards. I like to watch movies. So I was labeled the nerd. And even through middle school, not even playing three sports over the two years I was in middle school or participating in the school play could shake the smart kid and nerd labels for me. The smart kid part wasn't bad. I embrace it, it's part of me, it's who I am. The nerd part was the part I didn't like. I thought that I didn't fit the label as a person. But if I went through my interests and how I'm the same as an average teenage boy, how did I wind up becoming the nerd? The obvious factors are there. I'm in my middle school's advanced track math program with about 40 other kids in each grade, and I'm in the school's gifted and talented program with about 10 other kids in each grade. The behind the scenes factors are there too. Maybe it's the reading skills, honed by having multiple books read to me each night as an infant. Maybe it's the math skills, inherited from my mother, a high school math teacher. Maybe it's the social studies skills, inherited from my dad, a high school social studies teacher. You can see that I kind of fit the genetic jackpot. Or maybe it's the memorization from obscure football stats to just things that nobody would want to know but are out there. So around the same time that I was starting to be labeled a nerd, I tried to expand my friend circle by making some friends that were in the popular circle. Now, don't get me wrong, I was am and plan to be perfectly happy with my circle of friends. But my view on friends is the more the merrier as long as they're good friends. So I figured that I might as well expand my friend circle by making friends with some people who I may not have that many common interests with. At the start, there were maybe three or four kids in that group who I had known from elementary school or who were really open-minded and that became friends with me. But now, three years later, most of them are either friends with me or respect me as a person, and in return, I give them that same friendship and respect. Going with that, it does seem to help that I have an uncanny ability to make friends in whatever setting I'm in. From playing sports, like running cross country, to being in the school play last year, to participating in after school clubs, I can count friendships from all three of those areas. Like in the school play last year, I was one of only three boys, and yet to this day, I can count multiple friendships that I've kept strong over that year since the school play has happened. In running cross country, I was able to strengthen is existing friendships with people that I was already friends with and make friends with a lot of the new kids who are coming into my school since cross country is one of the fall sports and one of the best ways to make new friends. In going to after school clubs, uh, like I play the card game Magic the Gathering, I'm able to make friends that I maybe wouldn't see playing sports or being in the school play. Yet I can still count multiple friends from that after school club as well. I try to bring all three of these groups of friends into my life and to try and encourage uh, connections between those groups because like me, when I take a chance on things, 
Sometimes the result is a huge positive that you never would have guessed. And so sometimes by chance, friends are made when people from two of those different groups meet each other. And I know from personal experience that when you find a new friend, it's a really good experience. My interests, they're very eclectic. I'm not hesitant to admit that, but I hope that it's what people see about me, that there's something for everyone in me, not what people hear about me from some kids, which is that, oh, you know, he's just your average middle school smart kid. But soon, I won't be a middle schooler. I'll be a high schooler. And next year, my schedule will just scream nerd to the casual observer. <laughs> I'm taking geometry, uh, English language arts, an extra semester of social studies, all of that, plus electives, gym, stuff like that. I'm going to be in school from 7 to 3 each day for 180 days. Plus, I plan on running cross country again, being in the school play, and going to after school clubs. Moving forward, I'm going to try and use some of the tried and true tactics I've used here at the middle school to connect with some of the upperclassmen at my high school. Because even though that's not traditionally something that's done, I think it's something that can be done and that would greatly improve the school. As I conclude my talk, I want to address one of your potential concerns as the audience. Why should you listen to me, just your average middle school smart kid? It's because I was the change in my life. I was labeled a nerd and I didn't like that label. So first, I tried to stop it. But when that didn't work, I changed the label to fit me. Because even though I'm still the nerd in the school, kids know that I share a lot of common interests with them. So probably the takeaway is be the change in your life. Be the one that makes the change happen, not just sit back and wait for it to happen. But to wrap up my speech, I want to leave you with one last story. A friend of mine was talking to me right around when this opportunity was introduced. He presented earlier today. He said to me, what if you get kicked out of college because one day you're talking to your professor in class and you're like, hey professor, what have you done with your life? Gotten a lousy PhD? Guess what? I've delivered a TED talk. That's a great example <laughs> of classic nerdy behavior because you're not really making any friends and you think that you're better than everybody else because you're smarter. But I'm a new nerd, I'm a new brand of nerd, and I'm proud to be a nerd. Thank you very much.